Good afternoon. Ovviamente molto contenta di it, uh, accogliere a Roma per la prima volta. It is really a great pleasure for me to uh, host today the uh, UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer today. And I think that uh, today's uh, meeting is a further evidence uh, of our very strong cooperation. Uh, uh, our two respective countries have always worked uh, hand in hand. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I've always been working hand in hand uh, to uh, give uh, uh, long term uh, responses uh, to the uh, challenges uh, of today. And uh, UK and Italy. Uh, represent two fundamental pillars uh, of transatlantic community, uh, and these two countries are to play a primary role in international scenario. And this is exactly what we want to do. Uh, the further enhancement of our strategic uh, cooperation uh, uh, can uh, be uh, decisive uh, uh, to uh, address the various uh, uh, points in the agenda, international agenda, to uh, guarantee prosperity to our countries. And uh, it is uh, along these lines uh, that we have adopted today's uh, joint uh, declaration, a peace uh, declaration which is very important because uh, it has very uh, intangible points, uh, important points, uh, and which are, is an evidence of our uh, deep-rooted uh, relation between our two uh, countries. When we met uh, in uh, London in uh, July on the sidelines uh, of uh, the um, summit, uh, we had uh, decided then uh, that our attention uh, uh, would have been uh, focused uh, on a number of points when it comes to enhanced cooperation. So the uh, continuous dialogue in terms of uh, foreign policy and uh, defense policy uh, in light of the uh, fundamental contribution that both our nations have given and are presently giving uh, to uh, preserve peace and stability. But uh, uh, another point is energy, another uh, basic principle of Italian and uh, UK policy and uh, science. Uh, uh, and the uh, very close uh, relation of our societies, uh, the security uh, fight against crime, and uh, uh, the uh, migration flows uh, uh, counteracting uh, massive uh, illegal immigration. And this is a uh, topic we have uh, uh, um, addressed uh, in detail today. There are so many migrants who are crossing the Mediterranean to uh, illegally have access in Europe, and many of them also cross the channel to, uh, to access uh, the UK. So this is a problem which has affected the, the whole of Europe. And with Prime Minister Stammert, we agree that the first thing to be done is to intensify our fight against human trafficking, and we need to do so. Uh, further uh, uniting our uh, forces, uh, enhancing uh, security, uh, cooperation between our law enforcement uh, uh, people, uh, between our judicial, uh, judicial authorities, uh, and uh, trying to get to the very core of uh, this activity uh, to major uh, mafia uh, prosecutors, uh, um, um, Paolo Borsellino and Falcone uh, would say, follow the money, follow the money uh, if you want to uh, get to the very core of the, the uh, in criminal activity, and this is something that we have already shared at the G7 summit when we decided to set up an international coalition uh, against human trafficking, and our goal is to uh, pull together uh, everybody's effort uh, in uh, trying to counteract uh, these uh, uh, criminal organizations which are leveraging on the desperation of people. And uh, <clears throat> we want to maximize uh, our cooperation between uh, global European partners, uh, and we also agree that uh, to this end, we also have uh, to uh, better uh, harness uh, uh, organizations such as uh, Europol and Interpol. And this is one of the things we are addressing now, because we're trying to see how we can uh, better uh, use uh, these uh, uh, organizations uh, against uh, uh, organized crime. <coughs> Another point, we want, we want to get to the very root of the migration flow problem, uh, and uh, we are, are giving a renewed att attention on the uh, African continent, uh, which, as you know, is a uh, objective which also is tied to the fact that uh, we need to develop a new cooperation with countries of origin, uh, with the transit countries uh, of the migration flow. So we uh, 
and uh, we also uh, want to uh, follow the footsteps of uh, what the UK and has already done uh, through the so-called Rome process. We want to uh, with the voluntary um, assisted uh, repatriation processes uh, that we want to further increase. Uh, and we also agree on the fact that uh, we uh, uh, must uh, uh, must not shy away uh, from uh, a new uh, brave uh, uh, other options. Uh, and we mentioned here uh, Italy-Albania agreement, uh, and the UK government has uh, shown great interest in this agreement. Uh, and of course, uh, we have uh, shared with him uh, all the contents uh, of uh, this uh, agreement. Uh, when it comes to migration flows. Uh, economic relations. Economic relations uh, are uh, very intense uh, in terms of investments, uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, as you know, the Italian community in the UK is one of the largest uh, uh, community abroad. It's got 600,000 people, uh, many businesses uh, uh, working in the UK. Uh, mm, many uh, UK investments in Italy. So uh, this is something that we want uh, to uh, further develop uh, this morning. Uh, Prime Minister has met various uh, CEOs of uh, major uh, Italian and uh, UK businesses. Uh, and uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, I think, uh, a huge potential here to tap into. And uh, I think when it comes to 500 million euros uh, investments uh, is another uh, evidence of uh, uh, this willingness uh, to further enhance our bilateral relation and to further enhance uh, trade. Uh, we, uh, one aspect of this cooperation is also the uh, more strategic raw materials uh, and in innovative uh, um, materials, a global compact air program. Uh, this means uh, joint development uh, together with UK and Japan, uh, a sixth generation uh, an aircraft uh, by 2035. Uh, this is a uh, project which also uh, represents opportunities uh, and which uh, further contributes to developing the uh, European defense industry, because European defense industry uh, is uh, something which uh, is of major uh, interest uh, for all European countries. Uh, and uh, we're also working on a, a protocol on science, uh, and this is uh, mm, and here refer to science, technology, and uh, uh, innovation. We're also working together to uh, um, further develop, uh, develop uh, the opportunities of uh, exchange of our students. Uh, and here, too, we're trying to find innovative uh, solutions. Uh, so in other words, uh, Italy wants uh, to uh, further enhance uh, this uh, um, very good uh, relationship uh, between uh, uh, Italy and the uh, UK. And uh, we want uh, to uh, also support the UK in uh, its effort to uh, further develop uh, uh, increased cooperation with the EU uh, while uh, respecting, of course, uh, uh, the post-Brexit rules. Uh, and uh, within this uh, framework, uh, of course, uh, protecting uh, the uh, uh, rights of Italian uh, res who reside in the UK. And as we said, uh, we, this is a very large Italian community. We've also made reference to cooperation within the G7 and NATO framework. Uh, so, of course, uh, we uh, mentioned uh, the war in Ukraine, and we confirm here again our support to Kyiv. And uh, our ultimate goal is to put an end to this war, help Ukraine in having a future of peace, uh, freedom, and prosperity. Of course, uh, with the support that is needed today and the support which is needed for the reconstruction, in 2025, Italy will host a Ukraine uh, uh, recovery conference, which was held in 2023 in London. And this is another uh, instance uh, of our synergies. And we've uh, mentioned the Middle East. And of course, we can no longer postpone a global uh, agreement uh, based on mediation uh, um, by uh, uh, U.S. and Qatar, which is calling for uh, the um, ceasefire and the release, immediate release of all hostages. Uh, and uh, we also need uh, to guarantee humanitarian assistance. Uh, Italy calls on all the actors involved uh, and, of course, it stands ready to play its role. Uh, we are on the front line uh, to um, uh, counteract any escalation in the area, starting from uh, Lebanon. We've also talked about this. Uh, today it is a, a primary important
important uh, to find a, a long-term uh, um, solution uh, to the crisis, uh, which uh, uh, may give uh, the possibility of uh, talking about a two-state solution. So this was a very important meeting that we had today. We have uh, very, very important uh, um, results. Uh, so I am uh, uh, very satisfied with this uh, meeting here today. I'm sure that this is just the first of a long series of meetings. I keep you on the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Georgia. Uh, this is my first visit here to Italy as Prime Minister, so it's really great to be here today in such a fantastic setting, fantastic uh, weather. The perfect venue, I think, to follow on from Blenheim Palace uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and actually, this is the first in a series of landmark meetings in Italy this week. We have the G7 Culture Ministers meeting in Napoli. We have Arsenal meeting Atalanta in the Champions League. Um, but seriously, there's so much uh, that brings us uh, together. But I am here today for a very simple reason, um, because I recognize Italy's significance as a leader in Europe, on the world stage, uh, as a G7 economy, a NATO ally. Um, and so as we open what I think will be a new era in Britain's relations with the EU, our close friendship and partnership with Italy is more important than ever. And that's why it was very important for me to come so early on in my term as Prime Minister as a real statement uh, of intent. And I think we're both ambitious for what we can do together. And that spirit has come through all of our long conversations so far, not only today, but on the previous occasions when we've had the chance to discuss a number of issues, but very much uh, today, a resolve to work together for the good of the British and Italian people, for the security, stability and growth that we all want to see, and for the fundamental values that we share of democracy, justice, the rule of law. So, as you say, we used our time today to discuss the global challenges before us and our determination to meet them together. Georgia, I want to thank you for your strong leadership, particularly on Ukraine, because as Russia continues to escalate its illegal war, we will stand together shoulder to shoulder to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. We will work together, as we discussed, to deliver the 50 billion euros in loans for Ukraine under your G7 presidency. And I look forward to supporting the Ukraine Recovery Conference in Italy next year. We also agreed to deepen our security cooperation, already very important for both of us. Our forces will continue to exercise together through NATO. The Italian Navy will join UK carrier operations next year. And with vital projects like GCAP, we're determined to work together to boost our defense industrial capacity. On the Middle East, uh, we are united in our support for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. We want to see the release of all hostages, desperately needed humanitarian aid flowing into Gaza, and a calming of tensions on the West Bank in particular. Uh, and, and of course, as we discussed, none of this is easy but it is urgent and it is vital. So we will keep working together to resolve this crisis and end the suffering on all sides. We also discussed the challenge of irregular migration. This is a problem across Europe for both of our countries in particular, but across Europe. As Director of Public Prosecutions in Britain some years ago, I saw the important work that can be done across borders on issues like counter-terrorism. And I've never accepted, as we discussed, that we can't do the same with smuggling gangs. Um, and now, of course, Italy has shown that we can. You've made um, remarkable progress working with countries along migration routes as equals to address the drivers of migration at source and to tackle the gangs. And as a result, irregular arrivals to Italy by sea are down 60% since 2022. So I'm pleased that we're deepening our cooperation here, led on the UK side by our new border security commander who has been with me uh, today here in Italy at the Coordination Center this morning to share intelligence, share tactics, shut down smuggler routes, and smash the gangs. 
Finally, as leading European economies, we also discussed the huge opportunities that we can realize together. Italy is already a top 10 trading partner for the UK and our sixth largest source of foreign direct investment. That all supports economic growth, which is the number one mission of this government. And there's real potential now to go forward. It was excellent to have a business uh, event first thing uh, this morning um, when I met Italian businesses who are actually already working uh, in the UK. And I'm really pleased to announce that we've secured two new investments worth over 500 million pounds into our economy. Leonardo investing over 400 million into R&D and helicopter manufacturing in Yeovil. And Marsha Gallia investing 100 million into green steel production in Sheffield, supporting hundreds of jobs across the country. Those are the two uh, investment decisions I can announce today. We, of course, want to go further in key sectors like defense, green tech, science, and innovation to drive growth for both sides, create jobs, and improve people's lives. Because underneath all of this, it is important to say that there's a huge affection between our two nations uh, and between our people. Uh, great respect for each other's cultures, shared passions, shared values. So today we're building on that, optimistic about what we can achieve together as strong partners, allies, and friends. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. We have four questions. We will begin with Francesco Maisano. Good afternoon to you both. You uh, spoke about cooperation for the fight against uh, human traffickers. Uh, how will this cooperation play out? In what way the UK also looks to the Albanian model and the relationship between Italy and Albania? And also an update on the time it will take to implement this project. Thank you so much. Well, how this cooperation will play out in real life. Let's say that we are focusing, as you know, the strategy that the Italian government has put in place in order to counter illegal migration is very broad. And there is a cooperation in place on a 360-degree radius. On the one hand, countering the traffickers of human beings. And on this front, the work that we are doing is mostly a way to uh, perhaps extend the work done by our law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies, involving also other institutions. And in the future, we would like to uh, really make sure that our legislation is in a greater harmony in the future. Right now, we are dealing with human traffickers, heinous organizations, and they're very powerful. And they have long tentacles spreading everywhere. Now you make a deal with a trafficker in Bangladesh, then you can cross five countries and reach Italy on a dinghy. And this goes to show what the magnitude is that we're dealing with. No nation by itself can be effective in dismantling these networks of traffickers if we do not work on a 300 60 degree radius, first of all, involving our allies and partners, but all the countries of origin and transit, the work that we are doing. On this, we are doing very specific kind of work to see how to gather in a more structured way our law enforcement and intelligence services can work together and how we can involve, as I was saying earlier, how we can we better involve Interpol and Europol, facilities that are already there. And from my standpoint, they should have specific departments or sections dedicated to this, for sure. These are subjects that we need to discuss with all the other partners, but this is what we are talking about on the one hand. On the other hand, you know that there's all the work of cooperation with African countries, which is something that the UK is also interested in, and on which we are trying uh, to uh, find synergies, starting from the G7 that we spoke about, those initiatives uh, with which we hammered out the Global Gateway by the EU, the Matei Plan, PIIG, from the G7, to understand how this new cooperation with African countries, perhaps this too can also lead to networking for the work done at European level. And also we have uh, uh, the uh, voluntary assisted returns, and the UK has already dedicated energies uh, on this uh, for the voluntary assisted returns or repatriations to Libya to look for solutions to help the nations of North Africa, which otherwise risk being 
left alone in front of massive flows that come from other countries as well. So it's an extensive kind of work. Albania, well, I have seen that the Prime Minister was very interested in what we are doing, but for sure he should be the one to speak about this. But indeed, the model that the Italian government has uh, conceived of centers uh, to uh, process uh, asylum applications for those immigrants who uh, disembark uh, within Italian or EU legislation or European legislation in a foreign country. That was a model that was never experimented with before. If it works, as I hope it will, everybody can understand that this can become, let's say, a, a new way, really, to deal with migration flows. Also because of the element of deterrence that this creates vis-a-vis -vis relying on uh, criminal organizations to reach Europe. And this is the reason why, as you all know by now, we've been working on this project very rigorously. And from what I understand, it will take a few more weeks before it is perfect. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, it would have been better if it, if it had started earlier. I know that the world is watching us, and rightly so. Therefore, I think that we have to do this in the best possible way, and if we need a few extra days, as I was okay with this a few weeks ago, I will be okay with this now as well. But we're talking about a few weeks. Alex Forsyth from BBC. Thank you very much. Uh, Keir Starmer, on migration, you say that you're interested in the Albania scheme. Can you be clear? How seriously are you looking at the prospect of sending migrants to other countries for their claims to be processed? And are you entirely comfortable with every aspect of Italy's approach, given the human rights concerns that have been expressed? And to Prime Minister Maloney, was there a single piece of advice you gave Keir Starmer when it comes to tackling this issue? And what do you say to those who accuse you of human rights violations when it comes to migrants? Thank you. Let me try to bundle both uh, the answer to the previous question and the answer to that question up um, together. Look, what we discussed today is a common challenge, which is irregular migration. Um, and we discussed in particular law enforcement on the one side, how do you deal with this by collaborating, cooperating, sharing data, intelligence, etc. cetera, um, but also the prevention um, piece. And uh, that's why I had the new border security commander with me today uh, at the coordination center so we could look at where we can do even more closely related work on enforcement, sharing our data, sharing our analysis, sharing our intelligence, and sharing our strategies. Um, and in relation, we discussed um, the Albania arrangement, which isn't up and running yet, uh, uh, as you know, uh, and therefore uh, we don't yet know the outcome of it, but we discussed the concept um, of it, along with the prevention piece as well, because the numbers here, as I've said, have gone down quite significantly. Um, that's actually not attributable, of course, to the Albania scheme, because that hasn't started. That, in my view, is more likely attributable to the work that um, the Prime Minister has done upstream, as it were, uh, with some of the countries where migrants are coming from, and the particular details and the approach that's been taken. I've always made the argument um, that preventing people leaving their country in the first place is far better than trying to deal with those that have arrived in any of our countries. So I was very interested um, in that. And in a sense, today was um, a return, if you like, to British pragmatism. Uh, we are pragmatists first and foremost. Uh, when we see a challenge, we discuss with our friends and allies uh, the different approaches that are being taken, look at what works, um, and that's the approach that we've taken today, and it's been a very productive day. As far as I'm concerned, I do not know what uh, human rights violations you're referring to, frankly speaking, because I have explained at length that the jurisdiction of these centers in Albania it's Italian and European jurisdiction. So either you believe that European jurisdiction violates uh, the human rights of migrants, or, well, I do not know this accusation. I think it's uh, completely groundless. What we have done with Albania means that these migrants will enjoy exactly the same rights. They will have the same treatment that they would have had in Lampedusa, for instance, or any other hotspot here in Italy 
But this will happen in a part of territory that is not physically located in Italy. Why? Well, first of all, this helps us also to alleviate the situation that, as you know, here in Italy is very difficult since we are the gateway to Europe. And you have seen what happened over the last few years. And also because we think that by ensuring the full let's say implementation of both Italian and European jurisdiction, no one can say, since our law enforcement people are there, our judges are there, our laws, our models, uh, everything is there. So I repeat once again, either you are saying that Italian and European legislation violates human rights of migrants, or you cannot argue that what Italy is doing in Albania is a violation of the migrants' human rights. Francesco Olivo, La Stampa. <coughs> I wanted to ask our Prime Minister Meloni uh, her opinion on the uh, use of uh, Western uh, uh, weapons or uh, arms uh, in the Russian territory uh, by Ukraine um, army. And, uh, whether uh, the uh, 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 operation of uh, Ukraine in Kursk uh, is legitimate. Uh, from the uh, question to the UK Prime Minister, uh, may I? Uh, what is the uh, uh, go ahead of the idea of uh, giving the go ahead of the use of long range missiles uh, uh, in uh, Russian territory? What do you think about uh, uh, Putin's answer, who has uh, mentioned the possible use of nuclear arms, uh, saying that his uh, patience was wearing, wearing thin? Uh, with regards to uh, Ukraine, of course. It is very important for us uh, that Kyiv has the very best uh, conditions uh, to uh, set up a, a peace uh, uh, table. And uh, this is exactly what we've been doing right from the start uh, and uh, what we're trying to do to guarantee the best uh, conditions uh, to, to achieve this end. With regards uh, to the authorization of using long-range uh, missiles, uh, well, these are decisions uh, which are uh, made by single countries uh, which uh, provide these uh, weapons, uh, bearing in mind what uh, uh, their um, constitution and their legal framework. Uh, in Italy, this authorization, as you know, today, as of yet, uh, is not debatable. Uh, but these are all decisions uh, which we fully share with our allies. Uh, I'm saying this uh, because uh, this must not uh, must not be seen as a going backwards uh, uh, in terms of our support to Ukraine. When um, Zelensky came in Italy a couple of weeks ago, uh, he uh, said we're not asking Italy nothing more than what it is already doing because he's fully aware of what, uh, what we're doing uh, uh, presently uh, in terms of support to Ukraine. It is doing its utmost. Uh, now, of course, uh, each country uh, uh, has its own uh, points of reference when it comes to making decisions. We have ours, uh, but I think uh, that you can see your 360 uh, degree uh, support of Italy to Ukraine. It is a 360 degree support uh, which will be uh, continued uh, up until the very end. Uh, contrary to what some sometimes I have uh, read, this is a um, position which is uh, fully shared uh, by uh, all of our government. Thank you. Thank you. On this question, I think it is important for us to start from the fundamental. Um, position, which is that uh, this is an illegal war started by Russia. Um, and as a result, Ukraine has the right to self-defense. And we have all, um, Italy, the UK, and other allies, NATO allies in particular, been standing with Ukraine um, in defense of her right of sovereignty, of self-defense, and as a recognition that this isn't just a war in Ukraine, it's a war against the values of democracy, of freedom, and the rule of law, which apply to all of us um, in our respective countries, but across, uh, across um, all of the allies. And that is why we've supplied capability, uh, we've supplied training, uh, we've supplied money, and there are further commitments that have been made recently in relation to all of those. Um, and you know, I think it's very important as a matter of principle that we put Ukraine in the best possible position 
Uh, and that's what we've been discussing. We've had the opportunity today um, to touch on that. I had the opportunity in recent days uh, to touch on that. I'm not going to go into individual capabilities. You wouldn't expect me um, to do that. But the, the principal framework, I think, is absolutely right, and we'll continue to have our discussions in relation to it. Abbiamo Matt Tayton del Times. Thank you very much. Matt Dayton from the Times. Just to follow up on, on Ukraine, you both said, uh, you both talked about your support for Ukraine. Uh, Prime Minister Maloney, um, are you worried that authorizing the use of long-range missiles uh, against Russian targets may escalate the, the war to such an extent that Russia may attack a NATO member? And uh, to Prime Minister Starmer, uh, on immigration, your predecessor uh, repeatedly said he would stop the boats. Um, you've not done the same. Does that mean you're just being more reali realistic and you don't think or it's not realistic to expect the boats to stop completely? And very quickly, uh, will you carry on taking uh, gifts from Lord Ali? Uh, let me deal with uh, my side of that first. Look, um, we've moved from a government of gimmicks uh, to a government of pragmatism. Uh, and that means that um, I'm utterly focused on what I think um, is the most likely uh, deterrent and effective way of dealing with um, unlawful migration. And that is to take down the gang gangs that are running this vile trade. Of course it's a problem when we've got people arriving into the UK um, who are arriving unlawfully across the channel or any other route. And of course every government has the responsibility of making sure our borders are secure. But rather than a gimmick, which, um, as you know, costs 700 million pounds to persuade four volunteers to go to Rwanda, um, we have gone down the road of pragmatism. Already, um, we have returned over 3,000 people by flights. So the flights actually did get off uh, uh, under this government, not to Rwanda, but back to countries of origin, carrying with them 3,000 um, people who shouldn't be here, including the single biggest flight um, that has ever taken off returning people to their country um, of origin. And that's why we're working so intently on the Border Security Command, which is intended to take down the gangs that are running the file trade in the first place. It's also why I'm very interested in the work that the Prime Minister here in Italy has been doing in terms of upstream work in the countries that people are coming from, uh, which, on the face of it, appears to have had quite a profound effect on... Um, irregular migration into Italy. And that's what this is about. It's about um, the politics of pragmatism. The British are very good at pragmatism. It's what we're known for over the years, which is seeing a problem and actually rolling up our sleeves and thinking through which is the most effective way to deal with it. Um, under the last government, in my view, we had a gimmick that didn't work um, and cost an absolute fortune, and we're not interested um, in that. In relation to your question about gifts, look, the rules are absolutely clear in relation to gifts um, in terms of the declarations that need to be made. I said before the election, I say again after the election, the rules really matter in terms of declarations. That's why my team reached out for advice on what to declare from the relevant authorities. Um, they reached out again, more recently got further advice, and hence the declarations have gone in in accordance with the rules so that it's transparent um, and uh, you can all see, um, according to the rules, um, exactly uh, what declarations were made. But it was because I insist on the rules that my team reached out to make sure that um, we were declaring in the right way under the rules and then reached out again to the appropriate authorities, basically asking for advice about what's the appropriate way to deal with this in accordance with the rules. Thank you. Once again, regarding uh, the authorization of using long-range missiles and the risk of an escalation, it is a risk that we have to deal with every day. For sure, it requires a lot of caution, although we also have to say that when, when this is not happening, is not being taken into account, we have seen in the past few months we have seen cancer hospitals that were bombed mercilessly. And that is the reason why the work that Italy decided really uh, to, uh, to engage in is defending and protecting the civilian population. We have focused mostly on uh, anti-air defense. We offered an, a first SMT to Ukraine. As you know, we've been working very quickly 
Actually, we've been working very hard to along this road, and I think that today this is the most valuable thing that we can do, and this is what Italy is doing. And this is being recognized, I guess, by our friends in Ukraine, and this is also fully recognized by all our partners. So this is the line that we have decided to follow and that we keep following, making very relevant efforts in this direction. Thank you very well. Thank you all. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you.